my last video, you heard how Las Vegas gardener and late bloomer fan Patty Hayden gets two crops of tomatoes per season. But with my limited sun, I've got one chance to get it right. Today we're going to inoculate these tomatoes with my Corisai. And a whole lot more on this Thursday workday, so stay with me. I did supervise the planting in the ground of tomatoes in the front yard, but these potted tomatoes I was not here for, and I don't know what went into the planting hole. I'm already noticing some mildew and possibly some blight on these tomatoes, and I want to inoculate them today with MycoGrow and give them a little bit more protection help the mycelium start to grow in the web, in the roots, and help fight off disease. These were supposed to be potted up into one gallons when I wasn't here and they got potted up to three and five gallons. So some of these are going to have to be potted up even though they are quite established. <laughs> this is my summer growing wall and it gets sun May, June, and July. And in August it starts dropping behind the house so that's why I've got one chance to get tomatoes out of these plants. Now a three gallon pot as you will see it's just not big enough to support a full grown tomato plant so these will have to be potted up. My plan had been from the one gallons to select about 10 great plants and give the rest away but now I've wound up with 19 plants they're a little too big to give away the problem is, how do you support all these tomatoes? I'm not going to go buy 15 more tomato cages. That's not going to happen. So I'm going to have to make some hard choices about what to keep because they can't all be supported against this wall. And of course my front yard is full. <laughs> Have room for the tomatoes, so I certainly don't have room for them to split. So I'm going to have to uh, cut these off. Oh dear. Now this has gone behind, which is good, except that I need to move it. Okay. You have to spray with neem and um, aspinosad early uh, before the bees are really active. But <laughs> then when you're moving your plants around, then you're getting neem all over yourself. It happens all the time. But I just tell myself neem is an extract from a natural plant, so I'm not going to worry about it. Whatever I do today is not permanent because they've got to be potted up, the ones that are doing well by next week. This plant split a few times and if I can get it up against the wall, that's not a problem. 
but you know just in doing that I knocked off a, a bloom And you see I have squash plants that haven't even been planted. <laughs> These are all volunteers. You know, I can tell the soils in these are very different from pot to pot because some pots are lighter and some are heavy as lead. So, this is what happens when you're not supervising. I was just deadheading the perpetual spinach and I found this one branch that was covered with aphid nymphs and a ladybug doing its job. The next project is we're going to clean out this garlic bed that got absolutely run over by aphids. We had a lot of beneficial insects, ate a lot of these. Some of them got killed by neem and bug spray, but this whole thing is gonna get cleaned out. I think those beans have come out too. Everything is compromised. Oh yeah. Yeah, that looks bad. <laughs> Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Just oh, covered. Boy. Okay. While Eric is cleaning out that garlic bed, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to one of my fans who I've never met, who showed up at my next to last performance on Saturday of my play. And we got to meet in person and she brought me this lovely gift. Now, is this not perfect? <laughs> not only for me, but any gardener. Hands in the dirt, head in the sun, heart in the garden. Thank you, Holly. And since you're only in Rancho Cucamonga, you really have to come and visit me and see the late bloomer garden in person. <laughs> oh, we have our ladybug. They're here. Right. Oh, see? We have so many ladybugs today. See? See? Right here. Got a little bit of a something on there. a little bit there. Purple. A little bit. I believe this was the garlic that I planted in October that Bob in North Dakota sent me. That should have been thinned out. Rook, rook, big rook. Yeah. Mm. Big root, no bulb. One of my subscribers recently commented on one of my videos and said that garlic does not like competition. <laughs> and you know how I planted densely and overplanted and well I guess that's true because <laughs> I have had two major fails on garlic in the last week so there's a couple of little ones here that could be used but um, nothing with a big bulb um, but I haven't given up there's more garlic out there. This is easy. Like me, you put it in. Fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're just mixing up my special blend of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Work it in the top two inches.
This one pound pack goes a long way. One ounce or two tablespoons per 12 gallons of water. And you use between six and 12 ounces per plant around the drip line. So what you wanna do is use filtered water if at all possible because chlorinated water can kill healthy microbes in the soil. Right. So because I'm doing this in six gallon batches, I'm just using one tablespoon. Okay. Six gallon. we use on each plant. No, no, on the leaf. Okay, it's fitted. Well, it is 4.08 and Eric just pulled out about six minutes ago. And there were so many interruptions today that it kind of sapped me of the energy to film and we got quite a bit done, but it's not all on camera. <laughs> I did have Eric take out the rest of the garlic, except for a few scattered bulbs in various pots which looks not half bad. There's some good ones in here. And this is the garlic that was sent to me by BJ Court in Louisiana. And I wanna thank you again, BJ, for entrusting me with your cloves. <laughs> that 35 gallon garbage can full of borage liquid, whoo, did that smell bad. And he strained all that out and poured it on my fig trees and my princess flower and some of my trees that I never ever fertilize. <laughs> I know a lot of you really love this Thursday Workday series, but it's not attracting enough attention. And so I'm considering ha what to do. <laughs> I would love your feedback. Um, I have a solid 2,000 people that watch these Thursday Workday videos, but that number needs to be 20,000 to be sustainable. So I have to think long and hard about how I'm going to approach content, my content going forward, and what I feel that will attract more subscribers and more views. So if you have any thoughts on that, please share them with me. One more fan shout out, and that goes out to Sherry Fisher at Share2Organic on Facebook. Now, Sherry is, we became fast friends, BFFs, when I visited her in person in Pittsburgh on my Northeast tour in 2016. I shot a couple of videos with her. One of her fantastic greenhouse and hilltop garden, and the other out at the Pittsburgh Botanic Garden. So please check those out. The link is right above. She texted me on Saturday morning and told me that she had fallen going up the stairs to the front of her house and incurred the same injury on her right hand, right arm as I did. I just couldn't believe it. So I would love for all of my fans to go over to her Facebook page and give her some love if you're on Facebook. Thanks so much for your support. Please give me a like on the video and share it with your friends and I'll see you in the next one.